is it rolling Bob yeah a little shaky okay yeah I forgot my gorilla stand for my phone so this is gonna be a little fiddly here but we'll give it a shot Greetings, YTPC. In the woods again. It seems to be my favorite place to make videos. Last full day of summer, 2022. Haven't been here since June. It's been a busy summer, kind of crummy weather, drought, hot. Not the kind of weather I like to go into the woods when things are all crispy. I can't have a fire. It's real humid today, though. We had some rain this week and kind of cloudy and damp. Sun just com just coming out now, so it's kind of nice. Right away, I noticed two interesting things when I got here. One was a whole bunch of little red Fs. They're uh, the terrestrial version of stage of a, of a salamander. They, uh, I don't know the whole life cycle, but they, uh, they spend some of their life as newts in the water, and then they come out on land as little red, bright orange salamanders walking around the forest floor. Easy to spot, but there's so many of them this, uh, this time that I have to, <laughs> have to really watch my step. I don't want to crush them. I'm sure I probably stepped on one or two just wandering around here, but I'm trying to be careful. The other thing I noticed is these. Hope you can see that. Many of these little Mostly little, some of it, some bigger, but mostly little purple mushrooms. Whoop! Now I don't know much about mycology, but one thing I know is that psilocybin mushrooms tend to be purple. I'm not going to munch on these because I don't know what they are, but I'd be very curious to know if these. Were actually magic mushrooms. Uh, if you haven't read it and if you have any interest in mind-altering substances, highly recommend Michael Pollan's How to Change Your Mind. He goes into great depths about various types of psychedelic drugs. The history and how they got classified as was it class one substances totally illegal in, in the US but now some 50 years later 60 years later they're starting to be reevaluated as uh, something that may have a lot of potential for treating various dif disorders like depression and PTSD and things like that, in addition to some of their more uh, mind-altering, mind-opening benefits. I never tried it, but uh, given the right circumstances, I might. I think my favorite line from Paul, uh, Pollan's book was, they provide you with unmediated access to the divine. That sounds like something I'd like to try. Since I'm in the woods, I'm smoking my uh, chunky, rustic Rogers Rarity. 
holds a lot of tobacco and it's nice and thick so the bowl stays cool. Got a real custom built look to it. I'm not sure they're related in any way. And in it I'm smoking some Balkan Sassini. I had it kicking around for about a year in a jar most of that time. It's pretty good. Even though it's not Vulcan Sobrani. Sor Sobrani? That's what I was thinking I was getting when I bought it, but uh, I didn't read it the tin carefully enough, and they are somewhat similar. But this is all right, especially now that it's a little bit older. Good choice for the woods. Another thing that happened while I was here, and it's something I encourage you to try ever if you ever have the opportunity, is there was a woodpecker, I think it was a hairy woodpecker, was tapping away on a sickly beech tree here a while ago. And uh, close by and I could kind of figure out which tree he was in. He was way up high. The tree is that's right over there. It's about, um, I don't know, six, eight inches in diameter. And he's up there working away, tap, 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 tap. And uh, I walked over to the tree and I put my my ear against the trunk. I've done this a few times before. It's, it's really quite an experience. I call it a message through the trees, kind of like semaphore or uh, Morse code, sending a message down through the through the through the wood from way up high from a little bird. And I, anytime I do that, <clears throat> I feel like the world is trying to tell me something. And this past week, we've been watching Ken Burns' uh, the, the United States and the Holocaust, his uh, three-part documentary that just came out. I won't go into all the details, but it's, uh, it's, 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 it's really quite disturbing. It's how the world and the United States really turn their backs and close their doors to uh, the desperate refugees trying to get out of Europe uh, <clears throat> as the Nazis swept across the continent. And it's uh, a stark reminder that here in the United States and many places, but here we don't, we don't like to think of ourselves as being xenophobic and racist. But we were and and uh, watching Ken Burns, uh, I'm reminded as I watch the news that we still are. This is the same week when uh, governors down south are putting unwitting refugees on airplanes and then sending them north under false pretenses, trying to make uh, political points, score cheap points at the expense of other human beings, helpless, desperate human beings who just came here looking for help. And at the same time, just this past week, we had a former president at a rally with thousands of people holding up their hands in, in one arm salutes. Now you'd have to be pretty, pretty insensitive to watch Ken Burns showing archive footage of, of Hitler 
spouting out to his crowds and all the Nazi salutes. And then see something here in 2022. People holding up their arms in very, very similar salutes to a, an American politician. There's something deeply wrong in America right now. I suppose it's always been there, but something about our times, the internet, <clears throat> our politicians, is not bringing out the best in us. I just discovered that my paternal great-grandparents came here, no, great-great-grandparents came here, as far as I can tell, <clears throat> in uh, about 1850, thereabouts, to escape the Irish potato famine. My, both my great-grandparents on my father's side were born in 1856, which is right after the, uh, the potato famine. So I know what it is. I don't know what it is, thank God, because uh, my life has been, been easy. But uh, I have ancestors who knew what it was to flee desperate times and come to America looking for a better life. <clears throat> and. Uh, Thank goodness they did, because uh, otherwise I wouldn't be here today. And I'm deeply appreciative of all the trials and tribulations that my forebears went through <clears throat> for you know, literally thousands of generations, but especially the ones that I can find out information about, um, that made it possible for me to be here today and have a good life. And life is good today. Just take a day off, hang out in the woods, use the, my little chainsaw to cut up some uh, some bowl blanks so that I can turn some bowls on my lathe at home. A little firewood. <clears throat> Cook lunch on the fire. Enjoy a pipe if I could keep it lit and uh, appreciate what I have. I hope you are, are uh, grateful for everything you have, and uh, thank you for, for joining me today. Be well. <clears throat>